Hello children, in the previous lecture you learnt about the electric field intensity, electric potential, electric dipole, behavior of electric dipole in uniform electric field that is expression for torque and electric potential energy stored in the dipole. Today, we will be introducing a new topic that is electric field lines or electric lines of force. We will try to understand these topics. After then, we will be learning about area vector, electric flux and then Gauss law. So, these are the important topics to be learnt today. So, let us start with electric field lines or electric lines of force. You see, electric field, you already know. Lines means line. Electric lines of force. You know force, you know electric force. Lines means the line. Electric field lines are the imaginary lines, imaginary curves used to represent electric field in the space. Actually electric field lines are the geometrical representation of electric field. We can tell in short. So you should write it that electric field lines are the imaginary lines used to represent the existence of electric field in the space. It is also defined as the imaginary lines along which a free test charge can move in the electric field if it is free to move. Have you got? Means the Electric field lines are the imaginary lines along which a free test charge can move in the electric field. Now after knowing about that, you have to know about the properties of electric field lines. Electric field lines, concept of electric field lines was given by Faraday. And now you have to discuss about the properties of field lines, electric field lines properties. So you see properties of electric field lines. First property, it starts from positive charge and terminates at negative charge. You see this is a positive charge. Electric field lines starts from positive charge, initiates from positive charge like this. You see all these free lines start from the positive charge. It terminate at negative charge. Suppose this is a negative charge, so it will terminate at negative charge. All the field lines terminate at negative charge. Now you can ask, what is the reason to have the concept that it start from positive charge and terminates at negative charge? I told you just now that electric field lines are the lines along which a positive test charge can move in the field. Suppose this, this is a positive source charge. So if you will place a test charge here, test charge is always a positive charge. Suppose it is Q0. What will happen? It will experience force in this direction. If you will place it here, it will experience force in this direction. If you will place it here, it will experience force in this direction. Means wherever you will place the test charge Q0 in the field of a positive charge, it will be going away from the given charge. So this is the reason that we 
take the field lines starting from the positive charge and the same reason is there that they terminate at the negative charge because the negative charge will attract test charge test charge is always taken as a positive charge it was discussed earlier so first property is electric field lines start initiate from positive charge and terminate at the negative charge they are continuous curve from positive to negative charge have you got so these are the field lines due to individual positive charge these are the field lines due to individual negative charge you see if positive and negative charge both the charges are there then what will happen the field lines will be like this they will initiate from the positive charge and terminate at the negative charge they will initiate from the positive charge and terminate at the negative charge like this if both the charges are positive suppose both the charges are positive then what will happen both the charges are positive they will be like this both the charges are positive if the magnitude of both the charges are equal then there will be a neutral there will be a neutral point at the point lying at the middle of the line joining the two charges means at the mid point of the line joining the two charges if these two charges are equal in magnitude if this is the charge with greater magnitude and this is the charge with smaller magnitude then the neutral point will be near by the charge with a smaller magnitude you can understand it with the help of the coulomb's law also is it clear means first property can be explained as the electric field lines start from positive charge and terminate at negative charge these are also called electric lines of force because electric force acting on the test charge are along the lines through which field can propagate is it clear so this is the first property second property is that second property the tangent to the electric field line at a point gives the direction of electric field intensity at that point suppose this is an electric field line at this point this will be the tangent at this point this will be the tangent at this point this will be the tangent so at the point a electric field intensity is along this direction at the point b electric field intensity is along this direction at the point c the electric field intensity is along this direction is it clear means second property the tangent to the electric field line at a point represents the direction of field intensity at that particular point this this is the second property third property <coughs> no two field lines can intersect each other suppose this is a field line and this is another field line they will never intersect each other at a point what is the reason the reason is that if the two field lines will intersect each other there will be two tangents at the same point corresponding to the two different field lines means tangent corresponding to this field line is this one and tangent corresponding to this field line is this one what does it mean it means that electric field intensity has two different directions at the same point one is along this and other is along this which is totally impossible this is the reason that no two electric field lines intersect each other at any cost next property
द नंबर डेंसिटी ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक लाइन्स ऑफ फोर्स द नंबर डेंसिटी ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड लाइन्स एट अ पार्टिकुलर पोजिशन गिवस द न्यूमेरिकल वैल्यू ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड इंटेंसिटी एट दैट पॉइंट मीन्स सपोज द इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड लाइन्स आर नॉट पैरल टू ईच अदर दे आर डाइवर्जिंग और दे आर कन्वर्जिंग सपोज द इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड लाइन्स आर लाइक दिस इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड लाइन्स आर लाइक दिस वॉट डज इट मीन द इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड लाइन्स आर डाइवर्जिंग इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड लाइन्स कैन बी कन्वर्जिंग लाइक दिस can be converging like this in this situation if we will find the number of field lines per unit area here and number of field lines per unit area here they will be different so intensity of electric field at these two positions will be different it depends upon the number of field lines passing per unit area so you can write the fourth property as the number of electric field lines passing per unit area that is elect number density of electric field lines at a place gives the numerical value of electric field intensity at that point is it clear okay suppose that there are two charges there are two charges with different magnitudes this is a charge q1 and this is a charge q2 q2 is negative q1 is positive it is not necessary that all the field lines starting from q1 will terminate at q2 some of them may start from q1 and terminate at q2 like this it may also be possible that some of the field lines have started from q1 but they are not terminating at q2 means there are different number of field lines corresponding to the two given charges suppose n1 is the number of field lines corresponding to charge q1 and n2 is the number of field lines corresponding to the charge q2 then ratio of the magnitude of the charges q1 and q2 is equal to n1 by n2 this formula will be used to solve different objective numericals to be asked in different competitive examinations or even in board examinations also so these are the properties of electric field lines or electric lines of force have you understand five major properties we discussed here and we discuss the definition of electric field lines electric field lines and electric lines of force both are same after knowing about electric field lines we have to know about electric flux but before defining electric flux you have to know about area vector because area vector will be required to define electric flux so let us know about area vector you all know area is a scalar quantity like length is a scalar quantity you also know the length is a scalar quantity in the same way area is also a scalar quantity but you know for some meaningful purpose length can be made a vector in the same way for some meaningful purpose area can also be made a vector can you give me an example when the length is used as a vector yes you can give because you learnt just in electrostatics that this is the positive charge q and this is the negative charge q this is the distance between them it is taken as 2l this forms a dipole and we take electric dipole moment p is equal to q into 2l you see we put an arrow over l making l vector and it is convention that the direction of l is from negative to positive charge earlier it was not a vector it was a scalar length means a scalar again you see 1 by 
एफ इज इक्वल टू वन बाय फोर पाए सिलन नोट क्यू वन क्यू टू बाय आर क्यू वैक्टर आर आर इज द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन टू चार्जेज एंड यू मेड इट वैक्टर टू डिफाइन द डायरेक्शन ऑफ फोर्स इज इट क्लियर टू डिफाइन द डायरेक्शन ऑफ फोर्स वी यूज एरो साइन ओवर आर मीन्स फॉर सम मीनिंगफुल पर्पस अ लेंथ कैन बी यूज एज अ वैक्टर इन द सेम वे फॉर सम मीनिंगफुल पर्पस एन एरिया कैन ऑल्सो बी ट्रीटेड एज अ वैक्टर सो यू सी हाउ कैन यू डिफाइन एरिया वैक्टर सपोज देर इज अ सर्फेस देर इज अ सर्फेस दिस इज अ स्मॉल एलिमेंट ऑफ द गिवेन सर्फेस इट्स वैल्यू इज डी एस मीन्स मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ द एरिया इज डी एस एंड नॉर्मल मीन्स परपेंडिकुलर टू द एरिया इज दिस वन एन कैप मीन्स एन कैप इज द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द नॉर्मल टू द गिवेन एरिया मीन्स एन कैप इज ट्रीटेड एज अ यूनिट फैक्टर सो इट हैज ओनली डायरेक्शन इफ यू विल मल्टीप्लाई दिस डी एस बाय एन कैप दिस विल बिकम डी एस एरिया वैक्टर सो यू मस्ट अंडरस्टैंड दैट एरिया कैन बी यूज एज अ वैक्टर एंड दैट वैक्टर इज डिफाइंड एज द एरिया इन द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द नॉर्मल टू द गिवेन एरिया नाउ नॉर्मल कैन हैव टू डिफरेंट डायरेक्शन वन अवे फ्रॉम द सर्फेस एंड अदर टूवर्ड्स द सर्फेस सो द एरिया वैक्टर टेकन अवे फ्रॉम द सर्फेस इज टेकन एज पॉजिटिव एंड एरिया वैक्टर टूवर्ड्स द सर्फेस इज टेकन एज नेगेटिव इट विल ऑल्सो बी यूज एज पर द रिक्वायरमेंट सो आई थिंक यू अंडरस्टैंड एरिया वैक्टर नाउ आफ्टर नोइंग अबाउट एरिया वैक्टर यू हैव टू नो अबाउट इलेक्ट्रिक फ्लक्स सो लेट अस डिफाइन इलेक्ट्रिक फ्लक्स इलेक्ट्रिक फ्लक्स you see this word flux is originated from the word flow flow means flow of field lines is called flux in physics we define electric flux as the number of field lines number of electric field lines electric field lines passing perpendicularly through a given area through a given area so this is electric flux now how can you define electric flux in terms of electric field intensity and area vector you have to learn that you know number of field lines per unit area is electric field intensity and number of field lines through the given area is electric flux again just try to understand number of field lines per unit area is electric field intensity and total number of electric field lines passing through a given area is electric flux means if you will multiply the electric field intensity by an area then you will get electric flux suppose this is an irregular surface and these are electric field lines or electric lines of force this is an area element and this is the normal to the area element if the area of this element is ds then area vector will be ds and this is electric field intensity so how can you find number of field lines passing perpendicular to the given area so perpendicular to the given area is ds and e is not passing through the area perpendicular to it e is just passing through the area suppose this is the area and e is like this 
and perpendicular to the area is this one. So only the part of electric field intensity which is perpendicular to the area has to be obtained. So E is the number of field lines per unit area passing along this direction. So number of field lines passing perpendicular to the given area will be component of E along the area vector. That is if this is theta, E cos theta will be the component of E perpendicular to area. So this is the electric field intensity perpendicular to the area. If you will multiply it by area ds, you will get electric flux d phi. This is electric flux. So electric flux is defined as E cos theta into ds. Means you can write it E ds cos theta. E is a vector quantity. Area is also treated as a vector quantity. So you can write it as d phi is equal to E dot ds dot product of two vectors and you know dot product of two vectors is a scalar quantity. So this d phi is a scalar quantity means electric flux is a scalar quantity hence if you want to find the electric flux associated with the complete given area we can find it as phi is equal to integration of E dot ds. This is the flux. You may see a circle over the integration sign somewhere. That means the flux through a closed surface. If circle is here, it means electric flux through a closed surface. So phi is equal to integration of E dot ds. Now, this is a physical quantity. So it should have unit. It should have direction, yeah, dimension. So first it is a scalar quantity. It is a scalar quantity. Its SI unit you see E is Newton per coulomb and this is meter squared. So this can be written as Newton meter squared per coulomb. This is the SI unit of electric flux. Dimensional formula. Sometimes dimensional formula of electric flux is also asked. So you see the dimensional formula. Dimensional formula N means Newton. Newton means force. It is ML T minus 2. You see this is meter squared. So L2 means this will be L3. Coulomb is IT or AT. So this is A minus 1 and T minus 1. That T minus 1 will make it T minus 3. So this is the dimensional formula for electric flux. You should remember this dimensional formula because it can be asked in the examination. So now you understand about electric flux also. After knowing about electric flux, you have to learn about Gauss law. So let us discuss Gauss law in electrostatics. Gauss law in electrostatics. Statics. This is Gauss law. Gauss law is used to find electric field intensity at a point due to uniform charge distribution. It can also be used to find the electric field intensity at a point due to a particular point charge as well as uniform charge distribution. In general case, 
electric field due to a point charge is used through coulomb's law but whenever we use coulomb's law to find electric field intensity due to continuous charge distribution that can be obtained but it is more easy to find that using gauss law so we will be learning all of them in the application of gauss law here we will just know about the statement of gauss law gauss law can also be discussed mathematically but in your syllabus you have to write the statement of gauss law so gauss stated that the electric flux the electric flux through a closed surface electric flux through a closed surface in vacuum is 1 by epsilon naught times the electric charge electric charge enclosed by it suppose this is a closed surface and q is the electric charge inside it so phi is equal to q by epsilon naught this is gauss law is it clear we can explain gauss law in more detail like this that suppose there is a closed surface there is a closed surface here is charge plus q1 here is charge minus q2 here is charge plus q3 and here is a charge plus q4 here is a charge minus q5 like this so total charge enclosed by the surface is q is equal to q1 minus q2 plus q3 therefore electric flux associated with this surface is phi is equal to q1 minus q2 plus q3 by epsilon naught means this q5 minus q5 and plus q4 will not contribute to the electric flux associated with this closed surface is it clear means external charges will not contribute to the electric flux only the charges inside the surface will contribute to the electric flux now suppose there is no free space there is no vacuum there is no air there is some other medium then what will happen then this epsilon not will be changed by epsilon means in a medium phi will be equal to q enclosed by epsilon we can also write it q enclosed by epsilon not epsilon r so this is the statement of gauss law in the next class we will be learning about the applications of gauss law we will also discuss the derivation of gauss law we will discuss derivation of coulomb's law on the basis of gauss law all these will be discussed in the next lecture today you learnt about electric flux you learnt about electric field lines you learnt about properties of electric field lines and the statement of gauss law thank you